Hey guys, this is Dave Trevor. Welcome. This is Singing Tips 27, how to sing with emotion. Really sing with emotion. Oh, the drama. Okay, enough of that goofing around. Let's get started, shall we? Now, what do I say when I say sing with emotion? Well, what I mean is you're singing with feeling. You're going to want to convey your song and your message of your song with certain feelings, whether the feeling is angry, whether it's sad, whether it's depressing, whether it's happy, whether well, it's all these sort of different emotions, and that's what this lesson is entitled to do. Okay, here we go. Now, why singing with emotion is important? Well, there's a couple different reasons. The first is this. It tells the story to the listener, because when you're really singing with emotion, you can convey those words across. You can, you can put forth those words so that they're easy to understand, and that it's easy for the listener to really grasp what it is you're trying to say. Okay? Plus, it, it makes the words real. It's like, it's the same thing if, if you're saying, you know, my, my wife left me and it was really awful, but instead you were saying it like this and you were conveying a message and you said something like this, my wife left me and it was really awful. Do you hear the difference? You can even hear the difference in the way I speak it. So I'll do it again real quick. So just, you know, without saying the words, without any real emotion, my wife left, my wife left me and it was really awful, okay? With emotion, it might sound more like this. My wife left me and it was really awful. Do you hear that? There's difference of sound because I'm putting emotion behind those words. We're going to be doing the same thing but with singing. Okay? All right, here we go. Remember that it's a direct communication when you put emotion behind it from the singer to the listener. It doesn't matter what the listener is. The listener could be the head or the microphone that you're singing in the studio. The listener could be your audience at a karaoke competition. The listener could be the audience that you're putting out at a performance. The listener could be the audience at a choir performance. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that that's what happens when you put emotion to is you're, you're directly communicating from the listener, excuse me, sorry, from the singer, the person that's singing that message to the listener. So there you go. Now here's an interesting point that I don't think a lot of people really know. I was taught this both, I found this both from personal experience, but I also found this both when I was learning how to sing when I was in like middle school mostly in high school though, and it's this idea, sing to one person. Really pretend that you're just singing to one person because people get overwhelmed when they get on stage because they think it's an anxiety thing, it's a stage fright thing. It's like they think, I have to sing to everybody. What you really need to focus on is conveying your message to one individual. And it doesn't matter the size of the audience, just remember that this is really a mental exercise. And you have to figure out who's that one person that you really want to communicate to. You really want to hear your message. There's this thing I learned when I was in college and it's called transubstantiation. It's a really big word, but what it really means is this. What you're doing is whoever you're trying to sing to, sorry, bleh, whoever you're trying to sing to, you want to convey that message to that perfect for a particular person. So when I was doing theater classes and theater courses, we do this thing called transubstantiation, just like I said. And so like you'd be doing a monologue and you'd say, "Okay, who's the other person that you're speaking the monologue to?" And you might say, well, my Uncle Ralph. Great. Pretend Uncle Ralph is in front of you. So you'd close your eyes, think of Uncle Ralph. They'd ask you questions. Okay, what's Uncle Ralph doing? Oh, he's doing this. Okay, um, how long has it been since you talked to him? It's been this. Okay, are you angry at Uncle Ralph? Yes, I am angry. Okay, now if you're angry at Ralph, convey that through your words. And you'd open your eyes and you'd have a different intense focus, you know, because you'd be really thinking that Uncle Ralph was right there, right in front of you. That's transubstantiation. That's what you guys got to start learning and that's why this kind of stuff is very important because it teaches you how to sing to one individual with emotion. So I hope that wasn't too far-fetched or too out there. If you guys had any sort of question on that, go ahead and leave me one in the comment section below, okay? Because I know it's kind of a lot to grasp, but it's the same idea and I'll show you how that's done a little bit later here in the lesson, okay? Cool. Now. What you want to do is you want to sing the appropriate emotion for the piece that you're actually singing. So if it's a sad song, well, do you want your emotion to be sad? If it's a happy song, well, obviously you want your emotion to be happy and everything in between. Remember that with emotion, it's not just a, a range of, you know, this to this. You got to range from this all the way to this and every single positive emotion that you could think of in between. So that's just something you guys should keep in mind, okay? Cool. Um, and a good way to kind of figure out, okay, what is the emotion of the song or what is the emotion of the piece or whatever is to try to look at it from the writer's um, viewpoint, the writer's uh, eyes. You know how people say, 
uh, if you can walk a mile in someone else's shoes, then you can live anyone's life, I think is the saying. It's the same kind of deal with singing. If you can really understand where the singer or where the writer was coming from when they wrote this piece, then you can say, oh, you know, off of this I can base this because it's a sad song. Now I need to find a sad experience of my own to really connect and communicate that with my audience. So that's what you need to look for. And if you can't, it's okay. Uh, take your best guess. It's not the, the, the worst thing if you get it wrong. It's all about practice. And you guys find some singers out there that you really like. Listen to them. Because um, I've, I've learned people say, oh, I like this guy's lyrics. Good. What do you like about the lyrics? Oh, I like how he talks about this, blah, blah, blah. Great. So now that you understand what his lyrics are about, put your own experience behind it. And then you'll be able to find that particular emotion because you can say, okay, you know, he was writing from this emotion. Now all I have to do is find it so that it's my emotion. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Again, I know this is maybe a little bit to absorb for some of you guys out there, but if you guys have any question on it, let me know in the comment section below. Again, it's really not that tricky. It sounds tricky, but I assure you it's not. Okay, cool. Moving right along. Remember this with emotion. Less is more. And what I mean by that is the less that you can give, the more you can pull your audience in. So, because you do, you really want to draw your audience in. You really want to captivate and uh, hold their attention. So, and you really want them wanting more. And if you do this right, you can. And one of the easiest ways to do this is with dynamics. Dynamics are the things that you'll see with most um, classical and musical theater type music, but it, it's in all different types of musics. But you'll also see it written on sheet, sheet music. Ooh, excuse me, sheet music. <laughs> but what it is, is it's defining the levels of volume. So you'll see F, which means forte, and you'll see FF, which means fortissimo, which means really loud and really out there. And you'll see MP, which means mezzo piano, which means medium soft and that kind of thing. They're all different things, but you can learn about dynamics and just listen to different bands that are on the radio. Some of the good bands that you'll see, they use dynamics. They pull you in, they draw back, they, they punch it, all that sort of stuff. It's very important if you're gonna learn how to sing with emotion, okay? And a good example I was gonna give you was uh, Chevelle. Chevelle was a band that uh, really had its height of popularity her earlier this decade, and they were really, really awesome, but they have this one song called Red. And I'll kind of sing it just so you can get an idea. I don't know all the words, so bear with me. But I want you guys to get the idea of the importance of how the emotion is coming through when I sing, okay? So, um, um, yeah, so I'll do this without emotion first to give you guys an example, and then with emotion so you guys can understand where I'm talking about, okay? Cool, here we go. So without emotion, it would sound like this. And the red as it filters through so lay down, the thread is real, with each sound. Okay, pretty boring, right? Pretty much the same all the way through. There's no real change. There's no real fluctuation in the voice or style, even if it's just one of the same style. But hear the difference, okay? And you're going to see the difference not only in my face, but you're going to hear it in the voice, okay? So here's what it would sound like with emotion. I'll do a couple more examples here, too but I wanted to give this as a very good beginning example. So here you go. And the red, as it filters through, so lay down, the thread is real, with each sound. You hear the difference? It's like it makes you want to listen to what the listener has to say. So that is singing with emotion. Okay, guys? Now, emotion should be present when you're singing. It just should be because it just adds such a nice, well, listenability factor for one. But it also makes it so that it's more interesting. I mean, it makes it so it's easy to listen to, yes, but it makes it so it's more interesting. And people that are out there making the big bucks, they sing with emotion. Or if they don't, it's been filtered in when they get in the recording studio. So it is there. Even if it's artificial, it's there. But what I'm trying to teach you is how to do it so it's not artificial. Because a more authentic, um, genuine, emotional type sound really makes a difference. So just to show what I'm talking about, I've done this in previous lessons before, and you can find one up here in the boxy box called uh, How to Find Your Own Style Parts 1 and 2. So if you guys get a chance, watch those, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But I'm going to use this little example that I've done before again. 
and I'm gonna take London Bridges and I'm gonna sing it in different styles with emotion and without emotion. I'll do it without emotion first and then with emotion so you guys get the idea of what it should sound like it should you want to sing with emotion. Okay guys? Awesome. So R and B. This is without emotion. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Simple, right? Here's with emotion. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Difference, right? Big difference. Next one is country. Country without emotion. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Okay, simple. With emotion, it would sound more like this. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Big difference, right? Again, these might not be the most perfect examples, but they're examples nonetheless, and I hope. I do. I hope from what you guys are listening to that I'm conveying across what it sounds like with emotion and without emotion, okay? Just wanted to get that through. Here's a couple more. Rock. Without emotion. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Notice how it was like the same all the way through. Here's what it would sound like with emotion. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Big difference, right? It might not be the same exact, um, or it might be close to a similar kind of tone, but you can just tell. Just by listening, you can hear the emotion in the voice. Here's opera. Opera without emotion. I wanted to try this to see if it would sound interesting. It might. Here we go. Without emotion, opera. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. With emotion. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Hear the difference? I know that one was very, very um, different and very specific. So there you have it. And finally, pop. Um, pop is, you know, popular music, so... See if I can do this. I'm not very good at singing pop music, so bear with me. If this is a terrible example, sorry. <laughs> Here we go, without emotion. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. With emotion. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Okay, so that's not a more like musical theater, but it could be considered pop because pop and musical theater have a lot of the same kind of, um, it's called devices. What a device is in singing is something that certain styles use in order to make it sound that specific way. So there you go. So opera and pop music have a lot of the same devices. There you have it. So there you go. So that's it, guys. That's how to sing with emotion. That is the the whole shebang -a bang of the whole thing. So if you guys had any other questions or comments about that, leave me one in the comment section below. That'd be great. I want to take a second here and say thanks to all my subscribers, um, all the questions you guys are leaving me, all the comments you guys are leaving me. Uh, thanks to all of it. Um, I have my inbox get kind of flooded sometimes, but that doesn't mean I'm complaining. I love it. Thank you guys so much. You guys rock. You guys are so awesome. Along with that, I wanted to have a quick note about answering the questions in the comments. I will get to them. It takes some time. I only have about one or two days now left in my week because things are getting so um, busy. I've got other projects that I'm working on right now and I'm super excited about all of them. But I will get to them. Either I'll answer them in the comments or if I get a chance, I'll get to my inbox and answer that. I might even create a separate email just for questions alone so that way I can keep everything organized. I'm still working on that and figuring out if that's going to be the right thing for me to do. And yeah, I'll get you guys. Thanks again so much. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. So thank you, thank you. Thank you. And speaking of questions, let's get right into it. This is a question of the week. This is from, there's two questions actually because they pertain to what I was talking about in the last lesson. First one is from Pepitit who asks, I thought caffeine was bad for your throat. Doesn't tea contain this? 
And then the other one is from Lethal Methane, who asks, So what's wrong with soup? I agree not eating a spicy or creamy soup, but I found that bland chicken soup or broth is great for the voice. All right, so to both of you, thank you so much for the questions. Those are great. I appreciate it. Keep those questions coming. To kind of answer both these questions for both these guys, because one's about drinking something and one's about eating something. And the best answer I can give for both of you guys is this. As far as the tea thing goes, caffeine in high doses can be considered bad for you, but as as compared to some of the other stuff that's in like energy drinks, like I said, you got taurine, you got guaranine, you got all these weird like uh, extracts and stuff like that. Those can get really bad for your voice, especially in high dose. And you're gonna find those in things like I said, Rockstar, Nas, and the biggest one, Red Bull. Those are bad for your voice, just plain out, flat out. Tea is not bad for your voice. It does contain caffeine, but it's not a high enough percentage or a high enough concentration to really affect or do anything to the voice. So that's for that part. The second part was about the soup. Yes, of course, um, chicken broth is okay because what you gotta remember is it's more watery. So it's like if you had a chicken noodle soup or something like that, you'd be fine. If you had like a light vegetable soup uh, that was real watery, you'd probably be fine with that too. He's making a good point. He's saying stay away from like the spicy or the really creamy soups. So yeah, both those work. I hope that answers both of your guys' questions. Again, thanks again. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Okay, so next lesson we're going to be getting into something very interesting. It's going to be about expanding one's style. This is like a sub to singing tips. I'm going to be going into all different styles and teaching you, the viewer, how to sing that particular style. I'm so excited. So the next week we're going to be learning about how to sing R&B. So sing your style. R and B, rhythm and blues, how it's done, how it uses falsetto a lot, why it's so popular, and more. So yeah, go ahead and tune in next Friday. My videos will come up every Friday, so check in every Friday for a brand new video. And thanks again for watching. My name is Dave Trevor. Um, you guys can find me on Facebook right here. You guys can find me right here on Twitter right here. And if you guys haven't already, subscribe. you got the big yellow button up top, big yellow button at the bottom, and I will talk to you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Take care.